as Chuck indicated, it's, we have um, confirmation that, that the, the correct sequence was sent by the software. Um, we had good power um, going into this event, and we also had a, a, a healthy indications of our electronics box that sent the signal. Uh, once the, um, th that time had passed, which was about three minutes into the flight, we had observed um, uh, various pieces of telemetry that, of course, we then try to correlate and uh, because at first, being humans, we, we don't necessarily believe one piece of data and, and we need to correlate the, the various pieces to kind of come to a conclusion. And, and indeed, we did come to that conclusion later in the flight. Uh, the pieces of data that we saw, um, when the fairing comes off, we actually have little wires that are looped back that as the fairing comes away, these wires break and we have an indication that the fairing has separated. Those indications did not change. We also have temperature sensors on the fairing, and we continue to measure uh, reasonable, realistic temperatures um, after the, even after the time that we expected the fairing to come off. And probably the most significant piece of data uh, that came later is that uh, when the, the, the fairing uh, is, has considerable weight uh, relative to the, the, the portion of the of the vehicle that's flying. So when it, when it separates off, you get a jump in acceleration. We did not have that jump in acceleration. As a direct result of carrying that extra weight, um, we could not make orbit. And, and the uh, initial indications are is that the, the, the vehicle um, did not have enough uh, delta V to reach orbit and landed uh, just short of Antarctica in the ocean.